Welcome back to my Hargreaves Learns Done portfolio update for the month of September. As usual, a whole nother month has passed and it's gone very, very quickly. Just a quick recap on last month's figures. As you might remember, we were valued around £47,411. Now, if you'd seen that one, of course, that was a stark contrast for the month just before where the stock market was in a terrible place and we've since had a kind of a bit of a bear market rally and now again, it's been another roller coaster month. Since that peak back in August, the S&P 500 has dipped another 7% or two, keeping in line with this being a very terrible year indeed for investors, at least the start of it. But fingers crossed we do have a few more months left, so maybe we're on the way up now. In terms of the catalysts that have made those moves in the stock market possible, we had a bit of a weird one where Jerome Powell just a couple of weeks ago spoke at Jackson Hole, pretty much saying at least what I thought was the same thing he's always been saying is of course that we need to get inflation down across the world especially the United States and that they're going to be increasing interest rates depending on that level of inflation which I thought was their entire job anyway but the stock market didn't seem to agree with that and then since that speech we've pretty much had a bit of a losing streak at the moment in the stock market so what the hell's going on? Just for the record, personally, I've got no interest in trying to predict interest rates or trying to predict different rates of inflation. I don't play the short term trading game and I certainly don't base my decisions for as a long term investor on any of these rates. And certainly that seems to echo what some of the best long term investors say. Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch similar in that they've been quoted many times saying they don't really care about macroeconomic events or certainly the different rates of interest because they're always going to change over time. Right, so let's jump in anyway to all my Hargreaves Lansdowne account. Now, just a reminder, if this might be your first time or if you're also a regular investor and a regular watcher of my channel, don't forget that this is just a regular investing account. So this is not inside my stocks and shares ISA or not inside any kind of pension. So it is taxable. It just means you have to be a little bit smarter about what kind of things you do. If I made any massive profits or whatever, I would potentially be liable all with inside my capital allowance gains and my dividend gains, etc. So just be aware of all that one. I've had accounts with Hargreaves Lansdowne for many, many years now across pretty much every kind of account you can have. But I've kept this side just because it's pretty low cost to run. And I like holding the investments here just for safety. Also, just a note on my kind of wider investment philosophy, I kind of operate a bit of a core satellite approach. And if you haven't heard of that, that kind of means that your core of your investment philosophy stays in index funds broadly, in low cost index funds, which I hold mainly over on Vanguard. And then my kind of satellites, my smaller parts of my investment go into this portfolio and others, which are more about the individual stock picking and making sure that I can allocate my money where I think there might be potential bargains where I can potentially beat the market. But do remember, in the long term, it's extremely difficult to beat the market. So go in with very low expectations. Don't go in thinking that you're some kind of amazing trader and just be really, really careful if you are going to pick your own stocks and be prepared for even more volatility potentially than investing in like global index funds. Now, as you can see on the screen, there's quite a fair amount of holdings. We're not going to go into everyone, otherwise you'll be bored out of your head. Now, there is one big change which I will just let you in on now. So a couple of things that I've been kind of paying attention to this month and thinking of over the last few months is around kind of asset allocation, which of course is just a fancy way of saying how much of your cash you're allocating to each stock. And I roughly wanted to reflect that so I didn't have one position which would be looking too much overweighted, at least one that I didn't have too much faith in and didn't have too much conviction in. And one of my funds, the Clean Energy Fund, I felt at about £8,000 out of a £50,000 roughly account, I thought was personally too much for me. And although I think there's a huge future in that fund and I didn't sell it out completely, I chopped that one in half and I've allocated that straight over to Alphabet, aka Google. And for me, a stock like Google at these prices, even after split, so of course they did a 20 for one stock split, I still think this has a huge potential to run. It's got one of the best balance sheets in the industry, has huge potential. And even with working out some of my own expectations for the stock over the next 10, five to 10 years, etc., I actually think only a small amount of growth rate with a fair assumption of profit puts them in a very, very good position. So I think they're going to weather whatever economic storm we have over the next few months or years pretty well. So that's a major change that I've made. But other than that, I don't think I'm going to be making many more changes. I'm pretty happy now where we are. Let's have a look now some other news in the portfolio. I think I'll pick on Nvidia and AMD of course because they've been taking a bit of a bashing, certainly had a volatile year so far from all of their big all-time highs. Now of course there have been a few catalysts in this industry, Nvidia especially who make graphics chips and other different chips for different kinds of industries. They've seen demand for their gaming chips and gaming graphics cards especially decline massively. Surprise, surprise, well no surprise really because of the crypto 
crypto industry. Now, as you may know, if you do keep track of what's going on in cryptocurrency, Ethereum, which is kind of second biggest in terms of market cap compared to Bitcoin, which all of these graphics cards used to be used to mine. So people were buying up these graphics cards for many, many multiples over and above the MSRP of the graphics cards. And then we're using those as proof of work. Effectively, they were getting rewarded every time they were making new Ethereum, keeping the Ethereum network up and running. Now, Ethereum is moving to proof of stake. So basically this entire industry has been kind of collapsed. So you will see now graphics card prices and inventories are piling up. And Nvidia's plan for that one is of course, basically just to pump less supply back into the system. So they won't be able to sell these graphics cards for any way near and above certainly RRP. So just be aware of that one. So of course this has affected them short term, but personally as a long-term investor, this really is just a bit of noise, I think. And actually, if you did want to enter into this stock, it's certainly a better time than it was just a few months ago. And also some similar thoughts from AMD, seeing a bit of a slowdown in demand. Of course, we were never gonna see the same sort of demands that were pulled through from 2021, all pulled through from the pandemic era. So I think that was to be expected. And I think a lot of this has been quite an overreaction. Some other interesting catalysts going on at the moment is of course, especially from the US, the CHIPS Act, which is really looking to incentivize different companies to bring in their production and bring in those supply chains within the United States itself, which of course is the biggest consumer and producer of these chips. Even though they might design a lot of them, actually the production at the moment is done by people like TSMC out in Taiwan. So companies like AMD, Nvidia, Apple, etc., are all trying to figure out how they can capitalize on this, get the best tax breaks, but also potentially bring more of that production over and back in the United States. However, with that though, there is some potential international restrictions that are coming in place. So potentially it could hurt some of the bottom line, although it really depends where the consumers are and where the cash is to actually buy these chips and increase their growth massively. So now let's look at a steady rock in this portfolio, the holding of Apple. Of course, I know a popular one with many of you. And of course, even if you just hold index funds, Apple is still gonna be your biggest holding because it makes up the largest market cap in the world. They had their event this week, didn't they? Showing off the latest iPhones and watches, etc. Very, very sleek. You cannot beat that marketing machine. It makes you want to spend a hell of a lot of money. The market reacted fairly positively to that. I think lots of people were impressed with the technology in the iPhone and the new Apple Watch Pro, etc. And actually what's quite interesting and something I always pay attention to is that the pricing of the phones, they've actually kept them the same as the year before. Now with inflation being the way it is, Technically, you could say that that actually is a price decrease, but clearly they've been taking advantage of their economies of scale and making sure that where there are any price increases in their supply chain, I've got no doubt they've been keeping them to an absolute minimum. Because of course they make their own chips, but they don't fabricate them. So remember TSMC, that company based out of Taiwan, actually makes a lot of the chips for AMD, Nvidia, Apple, etc. And of course, Apple even outsourced the production and the putting together of the different phones using companies like Foxconn. But of course, with their huge scale, they are able to pass those costs on to customers while also making seemingly outrageous gross margins too. So it'd be very interesting once these phones come out, what sales look like in the next quarter, all the analysts are gonna be well over this one. Jumping quickly to dividends, Unilever paid a whopping 18 pounds and Apple did pay a dividend as well. Um, always one you forget Apple paying a very, very small amount of the dividend, but it does add up. If you're a massive shareholder like Warren Buffett is over at Berkshire Hathaway, they get hundreds of millions of pounds in dividends from Apple, which seems absolutely crazy. One day, maybe in 10, 20 years, Apple will probably be like a massive dividend payer and a big cash cow. It will probably pay like four or 5% of dividends once it stops growing. But for now, they've got, of course, loads of growth ahead of them. PayPal's been doing pretty well. It's up 18% since I've owned it. I'm a big fan of trying to get a few beaten up stocks because of course, technology especially and stocks like PayPal probably ran up and got a little bit too ahead of themselves. So I'll take advantage of them now at these lower levels. Again, as a very long-term investor, I'm gonna be holding these for many, many years. I mean, at least five, but if anything, if they maintain themselves, probably running into decades, but we'll keep a close eye on things anyway. Speaking of beaten up stocks, I do hold these in other accounts. So if you do want to open up any kinds of accounts, I always keep the latest offers for free shares in the description. Don't forget to check them out. Let's not forget that Trading212 have just opened. And I know a lot of you have been getting some decent free shares from that link. And of course, with Lightyear and Stake and everything else will be in the description below. Always check them out. And outside of those, of course, a bit more of a boring UK stock legal in general, but I'd say boring in a good way, just keeps ticking over, delivers very, very nicely. We do have a nice dividend due at the end of the month, which I think was around, I'll put this on screen now, 
four to five p a share so i'll get around 120 odd pounds from that one now they do pay two dividends a year with the final one being the much bigger one so about three times larger than that one but we'll have to wait for that one to come around again in june but solid dividend paying stock and of course capital appreciation too so i know this one is a popular with a lot of you in the comments and then finally in number one position we're still waiting for this one to get beaten out of the portfolio is tesla still the biggest in terms of percentage gain and capital gain even though i don't have a huge allocation to this stock and i'm not some massive massive Tesla fanboy. Uh, I've said this a few times now, I do think it's priced for especially high expectation, which they have been impressively delivering on. But there's a huge amount of headwinds, of course, ahead of them and huge amounts of competition, regardless of how far, of course, you think Tesla are actually ahead of their competitors. There will be competition in this market coming. And interesting enough, in the EV space recently, you would have seen that Porsche are going ahead with an IPO at some point. I'll put that on screen now so you can see them going ahead. That will raise a huge amount of money for them to then develop more into their EV technologies and probably compete more with that high-end space which Porsche absolutely want to dominate especially when they transition over to EV completely. Now it wouldn't be a portfolio update if we didn't have some kind of news to talk about with Elon Musk because he's always in the news people are obsessed with this man and the latest news at the moment is his fight with the Twitter board which of course will be going to court at the moment and in all likelihood, it will probably end up with him probably having to buy Twitter. For what price you have to buy Twitter is going to be another story. However, he's fighting it, claiming that there's now loads of different bots on the platform, pretending as if he didn't know that one already. So it's going to be interesting to see in a court battle how much due diligence he did before he made the offer and how much he was expected to do before signing away that deal and saying that it's $54.20 as an agreed share price. I think all of this is negatively affecting the Tesla share price. I think it's a huge impact on him and his time. And I think it really detracts away his time and focus away from when he needs to be moving the company forward, which no doubt is being reflected in the share price at the moment, kind of going nowhere. Anyway, other than that, just a normal crazy month in the stock market as a portfolio update. Remember, if you are starting out at the moment or you're worried and got your money set to the side, at the end of the day, personally, from my perspective, I don't try and time the market. If I am going to be buying up any bargains here, I am looking at their price against what I expect them to grow and how I expect them to move over the next 10, 20 years. And that's where I'll buy my individual stocks. But I certainly wouldn't let myself, I wouldn't stop myself DCAing into the market and buying regularly just because I fear some sort of crash is coming. That's certainly not my style. And you'll see that as I go through the next few months. No big plans to change anything in this portfolio. I am always going to keep a monitor and keep a track of things like the change I've made recently but overall I'm a long-term investor and I don't make too many trades from that perspective so keep an eye on that one any questions let me know in the comment section below drop me a like on the way out I will leave as well my playlist up here of all of my portfolio updates which I share across all of the different platforms I have like Vanguard like Lightyear and Trading 212 eventually I'll probably have to get around to creating another one for as well keep an eye out for those ones but thanks so much for watching I'll see you in the next one and as always guys happy investing